Alex, that bomb threat here at this library was just that, a threat, because the Yolo County Sheriff's Office wasn't able to find any evidence of any explosives. Now, we did talk to a parent who went to that controversial meeting on Sunday, and she tells me she has no idea who was behind that bomb threat, but that she is disappointed that the meeting got shot down prematurely. I, I will give you one, one warning on that. It was a packed room at the Mary L. Stevens Library on Sunday when the group Moms for Liberty Yolo County held their meeting. Losing our rights to privacy, dignity, and safe sports. A mom of two, Ali Schneider, was at the meeting and was in line to speak. The group called the meeting a fair and safe sports for girls, alongside a discussion about transgender students participating in sports. Physical damage being done right now to girls and women who are forced to share their uh, single-sex spaces with men and uh, boys who call themselves women. But within 10 minutes, Schneider says library staff kicked them out. I'm asking them to leave. Got um, completely drowned out and um, shoved out by the library official. The group continued at a nearby park, but Schneider says she believes the library violated their rights to free speech. It seems like they continue to put up roadblocks to keep us from, again, exercising our First Amendment rights. Then on Monday afternoon, Davis Police and the Yolo County Sheriff's Office got a tip about a potential bomb threat at the same library. It made a specific uh, statement saying that the library was going to blow up at 3 p.m. Um, and it made some type of a derogatory uh, term uh, towards uh, the LGBTQ community. About 10 library employees were evacuated as law enforcement searched the building. And no explosives were located. We asked the sheriff's office if there is any possibility the bomb threat and the Moms for Liberty meeting were linked. We don't know if there's any link to it at this time. For Schneider, she says she has no idea who's behind the bomb threat and tells us she does not support that type of response. However, she does have a stern message for county officials. We all have a First Amendment right, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of belief. Now, right now, the sheriff's office tells me that they do not have a suspect. We also did try to reach out to the library for comment, but the county librarian never responded to my calls. Alex, back to you. Thanks, Jeannie. Now, legally, when it comes to a situation like this, where we have a public building like a library, where a meeting is taking place, does anyone have the authority to remove people from having that meeting? We asked criminal and civil attorney Mark Reichel, who is not connected to the situation, to weigh in on this. According to the Constitution, according to the Supreme Court, a library is where you would get access to information. It's not necessarily a public meeting place. So they can have reasonable regulations. You can't have people coming in there without clothes on. You can't have people sleeping in there. You can't have anything that harasses others. And so viewpoint is often not something that you can you can regulate and consider that to be reasonable unless it's deemed harassing to others. Now, Mark adds that rules should be hard and fast and they should be written down for everyone to understand them. Then they should also be applied evenly and fairly.